Yoga for Magic. Build physical and mental strength for your practice. Nancy Wasserman. Introduction by James Wasserman. They are my siblings in the occult sciences. Chapter 2 Yoga as a Physical Discipline A well-trained body helps a great deal to train the mind, which is the main purpose of all yoga. In order to attain complete freedom and immortality, which is the aim of all religions in the world. Swami Vishnu Devananda What? This book is a book for magicians? Why should magicians be concerned about cultivating a physical discipline? Many people on the magical path believe the work of magical ritual is not necessarily carried out on a physical plane, but on the inner planes. Why should they worry about health? If magicians need to spend time cultivating the body of light, why bother with the body of flesh? In fact, many people involved in spiritual pursuits tend to neglect their physical condition. Yet. There are numerous disciplines, distinguished voices that echo a different sentiment. Take for example, Dion Fortune, who wrote this in the 1930s. The Orcortes aims at making his physical body a vehicle that shall impede him as little as possible in his psychic activities. That is to say, it must be as refined as possible, using the word in the materialist sense, not the social sense. Secondly, it must be of a strength and toughness to be able to endure the exceptional forces he requires to transmit. The adept, therefore, is not an etherealized person, like the conventional saint in a stained glass window. A trained old cultist is, by virtue of his training, capable of great physical endurance and exceedingly tenacious of life, as is witnessed by the extraordinary happenings in connection with the murder of the infamous Rasputin, who resisted cyanide of potassium and bullets through the heart and brain, and finally had to be literally hacked into pieces before life was extinct. While most Western adepts would agree that a person does not need to go to the lengths of some of the yogis in India in the discipline of magic, it is very important to possess general good health and a strong and flexible body. In today's world, it is quite easy to ignore the body. Hungry? Stick something in the microwave or hit the drive through or fast food restaurant on the way home from work and pick up some dinner. Little creative thought or energy goes into preparing it and people tend to just as carelessly choke it down. Such food, which usually has an abundance of sugar, salt and preservatives, adds unhealthy weight and diminishes vitality. A lethal combination in the practice of magic. A generation of American children remain enthroned upon their couches watching television while munching potato chips. 
Let us instead be about the work of establishing temples and honing magical skills. Students of the old cult, like all students, are inclined to do a lot of reading and thinking, intellectually exploring the universe. While this may be an admirable trait, it is very important not to neglect other aspects of life. Taking the time to cook a good meal, clean the house, or weed the garden is as important to magical development as sketching that Enochian tablet. Sometimes the subconscious mind needs a break to process the information one is so painstakingly gathering. 